Want to know about a must-have lure? A type that's effective in practically every water for multi-species fishing that's great in the spring, summer, and fall? Well, let's talk about spinnerbaits. What they are, how they work, the science behind why fishes slam them, and also some methods and tips so how you can play them to catch those fish. I'll explain how this jingly chunk of metal that looks nothing like a natural fish or prey item works to attract fish. So even if you don't fish, this is the how it works spinner baits. It's very interesting. If you aren't using spinner baits, then you might want to reconsider. If you do use spinners, then stick around. I bet there's a thing or two you can learn to further master your fishing skills. This is video one in a three-part series. I will introduce the spinner bait, describe its essential features like blade types, how they produce flash and thump, and discuss accessories and their importance to spinner baits. Parts two and three will more thoroughly discuss the actual science behind why fishes slam your spinner baits, and part three will give some great methods for using those spinner baits. Be sure to like the video to bookmark it in your liked videos for future reference. Share the video with your buddies who might find this video informative and helpful, and also subscribe. It's, it's free. Why not? Any lure with a spinning blade can be considered a spinner bait. The safety pin or overhead arm spinnerbait for fishing inland waters will be covered more thoroughly, which is one of my favorite lures for catching bass, pike, musky, panfish, Look at that. walleye, and lots of other predatory species. Let's get into it. The spinnerbait model. What makes a spinnerbait a spinnerbait? The blades. The key feature of any spinnerbait are the blades or disc-shaped objects usually made of metal that rotate around a fixed point on the wire frame, or arm. When trolled and retrieved through water, these blades will spin around the lure causing sound waves and pressure waves, or thump, as well as visual stimuli that will entice fish to strike the lure. The blades are concave, or indented, to continuously push and pull water, allowing consistent displacement of water that produces the pressure waves. The blade's rotation also creates a consistent source of altering light reflections, otherwise known as flash. Blade texture, size, and coating play the most important roles in flash rather than general shape, such as Colorado, Willow, etc. A honeycomb textured blade will reflect more light than a smooth blade, as it has more surface area, as well as more opportunities for directed light to reflect in various directions. And this is very effective when the light source is adequate and unimpeded, such as on a bright day in clear water. The two main types of spinnerbaits. There are many variations of spinnerbaits with two prominently used variants, the inline and the safety pin. Inline spinnerbaits. The inline spinner design is fairly simple. Usually one or two blades are rotating around a central axis where the blades are separated by beads to enable frictionless motion. A weighted head and or body lies in front of the treble or single hook. A covering, such as a hair, skirt, etc., is set just above the hooks to hide the metal. Safety pin or overhead arm spinnerbaits. True to their name, safety pin spinners have their wire arm in the shape of an open safety pin. Generally, there are long arm and short arm variants. Long arm variants are more weedless than short arm variants during horizontal retrievals and are better suited for holding more than one blade. However, the long arm design can cause the hook to be blocked if a large fish collapses the lure on itself, thus making hooking the fish less effectual. Also, the long-arm double-bladed spinners tend to nosedive when the retrieval is halted, diminishing proper blade rotation, though there are blade types that fall with great blade rotation on double-bladed spinners. Many fisher persons who prefer to vertically play or yo-yo their spinnerbaits prefer the short-arm spinnerbaits, where the blades spin more desirably during vertical and semi-vertical play. This is similar to jigging. The basic components of spinnerbaits. Blades. As discussed earlier, the blades are what make the spinnerbait a productive lure. 
They create flash for visual stimulation, as well as sound waves and pressure waves for physical stimulation, sometimes known as thump. These are concave or convex and come in numerous shapes, sizes, colors, and materials. Most blades are nickel or gold plated from brass stock, but there are a number of other options such as silver plated, copper plated, orange coated, and luminescent. Blade Shapes Colorado Blade This is one of the two most common shapes for spinnerbait blades. The other is the willow blade discussed next. This blade is wider and often deeper than the willow blade and will generate more vibrations in the water, those pressure waves. These blades are used for slow retrievals at deeper depths in darker conditions. Deep cup Colorado blades offer even more vibration for low light conditions. Colorado blades are great for open water scenarios. Basically, the Colorado blade is fat and slow. Willow leaf, or willow blade. This is the other most common shape of blade. The narrow, streamlined blade must be played faster than Colorado blades to maintain the blade's rotation. These are ideal for quick retrievals through macrophytes, or aquatic plants, and for high water column or top water action, such as bulge, buzz, and water skiing. Willow blades are often used in well-lit, clear waters. Basically, the willow blade is thin and fast. Indiana blade. This third most common type is shaped like a raindrop. Its performance of vibration and rotational speed lie between that of the Colorado and willow blades, making it a more versatile lure. It maintains the narrow shape of the willow and the roundness of the Colorado. Inline spinners often have Indiana blades. Basically, the Indiana blade is a versatile hybrid. Oklahoma. The Oklahoma or turtleback, magwillow or Olympic blade rotates and vibrates in a range between the Colorado and Indiana. In waters with high fishing pressure, these blades may offer a new sonic signature as most other fisher persons are not likely using the Oklahoma blade. Studies have shown that many fishes are capable of associative learning, that is, they will learn to avoid lures that have fooled them before. Basically, the Oklahoma is a not as often used hybrid that may provide an advantage in heavily fished waters. There are many more shape and design types of blades, such as serrated, rippled, chopper, fluted, royal, whiptail, and thumper. Each offers unique aspects of the sound and visual profile. Many anglers make their own spinnerbaits or change accessories on pre-manufactured purchases. Other basic components. Wire frame. The wire arm is usually made of variants of stainless steel. Different metal compositions offer different tinsel strengths and vibrational allowances. The two main eye types are R and twisted, with R being more popular for safety pin spinnerbaits. A common mistake is to attach a swivel directly to the R eye of a spinnerbait. Twisted eyes may directly receive a swivel attachment, whereas the R eye should receive the line or wire tied at the eye. Hooks. Inline spinnerbaits will more often have treble hooks, while safety pin spinnerbaits are usually wearing single hooks. Stinger. This is an extra dangling hook connected to the main hook, either rigged pointing up or down and this increases hooking effectiveness as well as reducing the chances of the fish spitting the lure during a jump or shake. Cut tubing of silicone or rubber is used to fix or limit the movement of the stinger on the main hook. Split rings. The split rings are what connect the blade to the swivel that is attached to the wire frame. Clevis. A clevis is a C-shaped component that the wire frame slides through, attaching the tandem or second blade, or more. Swivels. Ball bearing, crane, and roller swivels are used to diminish friction and ensure proper rotation of the blades. Beads. A bead or two are inserted to help diminish friction and create spacing. They offer a surface for the clevis and blades to bump against, acting as a barrier for spacing needs. Head, body.
The head and or body are most often made from lead molds. This component is not only important for visual appeal, where an eye spot painted on aids in the appearance of a fish eye, but also as a counterbalancing weight for the arm not housing the blades. Skirt The skirt is tied to the body or attached by a silicone or latex collar and covers the majority of the hook. The skirt enhances the profile of the lure. There are a myriad of options for skirts with various materials, sizes, and colorations. Skirts are usually made of round rubber, silicone, and hair. Silicone seems to be the most popular on the market for the more diverse profile options available. Metallic flakes, luminescence, and fixed shapes. Silicone skirts also maintain a larger profile and wiggle more effectively during retrieval, whereas hair skirts condense quickly, offering less flare. Keep in mind that the skirt will add weight and resistance to your spinnerbait. When altering skirts, mind the changes to the action of the lure. Spinnerbait should always run true, meaning that the blades and body should be oriented vertical upon retrieval, one directly over the other. The body, often made of lead, should be seated beneath the blades. Dressings and trailers. Some fisher persons say trailers are pointless and some swear by them. Me? I find that I catch more pike and bass with a soft plastic trailer during the spring and summer. The wiggle that the plastic receives from the blades is a great visual stimuli to entice fishes. When a fish removes even the slightest bit of plastic from my tail, then I put on a new one, making sure that the tail wiggle is at its best. Pork rind is also a popular option and also offers the aided benefit of taste and smell. There are soft plastic scented baits as well. Other extras. Often, fisher persons will dip their skirts in dyes to change the color scheme of the profile. Also, liquid and paste scents may also be applied to the skirts and blades. Some fishers say that applying paste to the blades is a better strategy, as the blades disperse the scent far better. I too would agree. Either way, adding scents to your spinnerbaits will trigger the chemosensory organs in fishes. So keep in mind, this may limit your versatile, multi-species spinnerbait by dissuading certain predatory fishes that find the scent unappealing. However, applying scents is more likely to produce second hits should that first hook set fail. Alright, thanks for watching. Be sure to like to bookmark the video, share the video with your buddies, and uh, subscribe, it's free. Part 2 will cover the science behind why fishes hit your spinnerbaits. I make the science simple to help you understand how fishes hit your baits so as to help you with your fishing game. And part three will cover some good methods for using your spinner baits. Keep loving the beautiful chaos of nature. Mmm, rico.